Leads 486 million rand. That's what Busasa allegedly received to put up fencing at 66 prisons. It was all underhanded, of course. Well, that's the claim from the company's former COO, Angelo Agritzi. He continued dishing the dirt at the state capture inquiry today. Let's get a wrap of all the shady details from ENCA anchor Michelle Craig, who joins us live from Parktown. So, Michelle, the most popular name today, Linda M.T., the former Correctional Services Department Commissioner. What's the allegations against him? Yeah, absolutely, Shahan. You know, it's difficult because we've just come out of hours-long testimony by Angelo Agritzi. It's like we've been hotboxed at the state capture inquiry. The names have been tumbling out, the amounts of money uh, numbering hundreds of millions of rands. Uh, there's been some talk of billions of rands worth of contracts from one government department, that's the Department of Correctional Services. So it takes us a second, you know, when we cross live to you to just sort of center ourselves, find out where we are in the midst of all of this corruption. In your headline, you said the amounts will disgust you. And you're absolutely right. That's exactly how one feels having listened to the testimony of this uh, corrupter turned whistleblower, Angelo Agritzi. Uh, and just a note that, of course, his testimony still needs to be tested. These are his allegations. Uh, he still needs to be cross-examined uh, by the people that he, uh, he has implicated. But yes, the Correctional Services Department, uh, really the center of his testimony today. And Linda M.T. is uh, the former commissioner uh, at the, the Department of Corrections, central to his testimony, along with the likes of another commissioner, uh, Patrick Gillingham. Together, uh, they ensured that Busasa got contracts between three short years, 2004 and 2007, contracts uh, with Bosasa and the Correctional Services Department to the tune of 1.5 billion rand. Now his testimony focusing on the, those senior officials, Linda M. T. Uh, got a number of gifts, uh, a number of bribes during that period. Uh, in fact, Shahan, someone was jokingly talking about the fact that uh, the relationship between Bosasa and the Department of Corrections was almost like any other consulting relationship where once my, uh, my tenure ends, in this case, Linda M. T.'s tenure at the uh, Department of Corrections ended 10 years ago, but for 10 years, he continued to get these bribes uh, uh, and kickbacks from Bosasa. Uh, it's alarming. Uh, his bribes included not only key amounts of money, but Bosasa even built him a house, even furnished it. Let's take a listen to what Angelo Gritti said. I would met Mr. T for the second time, so I would, it was in the morning sometime. I went with Mr. Watson to, get, um, to Richmond T's house in Savannah Hills estate and I was informed uh, we sat outside waiting because he had gone on a morning walk or something and we sat outside waiting and Gavin said you see this beautiful house you he actually was being facetious he says you built for this politician um, meaning that you know uh, he was being he's saying that we worked and we earned the money and then he would said that you actually built it because it was an expensive house. So uh, I was also informed that all the furnishings in the house had been done. And later on, the scheme when the SIU report broke and that and everything started coming out, I was then only really informed of the scheme that happened. Until that time, I did not know how they had done it. Um, I suspected that there was bribery in terms of Richmond T and the house and all that, but I d did not have a clue who had organized it, how it had been done, as it was very secretive. Agritzi also spoke about the underhanded tactics used to get tenders through a subcontractor. Tell us about that. Listen, you talk about underhanded tactics. I just want to give our viewers a sense of the kinds of testimony we're hearing uh, and that we've heard today in particular from Angelo Agritzi, just to give us a sense of how these things, uh, these underhanded tactics that you talk about, how they actually unfold when the bribery is taking place. Angelo Agritzi describing to us uh, when the SIU investigation uh, into Bosasa was hotting up, uh, how he and some other key people at Bosasa 
were instructed allegedly by Gavin Watson, the CEO uh, of Busasa. Of course, the name has changed uh, three times at least over the past few years. But Gavin Watson instructing uh, them to go to this travel agency, uh, the travel agency that had, of course, details, invoices around VIP trips that had been uh, taken by some key members of government. They were instructed to go to this travel agency to collect the computers and the invoices, anything that implicated Bosasa and link them to bribery of government officials, and to go and, listen to this, bury and burn the computers in some field. The travel agency in question agrees because uh, it has a lucrative contract with Bosasa. It's getting sales to the tune of 1.7, uh, between 1.7 and 2.2 million rand a month from that company. So it agrees to having uh, its own computers destroyed and the evidence destroyed with it. But yes, so we've been focusing on the Department of Correctional Services today and those dodgy contracts to the tune of 1.5 billion rand in the space of three years. Uh, agreed to also describing this fencing contract with the Department of Correctional Services. Now he says Basasa had in fact never worked in this field and so they had no idea how to go about it. But they're given a sort of lead time to try and get themselves uh, ready. And, and what do they do? It's one of the biggest contracts to be awarded to any company, he says, in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, it has a front in the form of Pezulu shareholders. And these shareholders are called, he names them, Gloria Josephs and John Roddenberg. Uh, they would retain interests in this company uh, uh, by subcontracting through Bosasa. Bezulu, in fact, is a front to keep the heat of Bosasa. And the thing about it uh, is, Shahan, that this is how tender fraud happens. So you're thinking that you're going, uh, you're submitting a tender for a government contract and you're doing so by the book. This is where the tender fraud happens. Bosasa gets all of the relevant information months in advance. It has the upper hand in every respect. It has a massive advantage. And what happens? It gets the contract. Let's listen to him. The agreement was we're submitting as subcontractors for Pezulu, but at the same time, we're also submitting as our own company. So, oh, is that normal? Well, no, it's not very normal. Mm. It's not normal at all. Well, when you say submitting as subcontractors... Um, let's bear in mind that no tender or invitation to bid had been issued at the stage. Nothing whatsoever. Let me ask you, why would all these complex and detailed arrangements be entered into if there was no tender on the horizon? Uh, the reason, Chair, is because let's get our ducks in a row. This is the biggest fencing tender in the history of South Africa, Africa, and probably the Southern Hemisphere. The, the fencing was, uh, what was contemplated was that the fencing would be done for correctional services throughout the whole country. Correct. Okay, all right, yes. Originally the plan was to start with phase one, phase two, phase three. Phase one would be the fence at 47 of the centers of excellence, they call them, to make sure that everybody sees them. And at that stage as well, there was quite a few escapes and that type of thing. So this fence would prove as the, the solution, the utopia of how to run a prison. And it's being applied in, it's a very good system being applied internationally. And South Africa's prisons would be the first in the world to have all of them using this technology. But it was also the monopolizing of the fencing contracts um, with correctional services, because once you were in, you were in for life. Michelle, listening to this testimony, your jaw is definitely on the floor. We have to leave it there for now, though. ENCA anchor Michelle Craig in Parktown.